it's early fall these fish are grouping up we got a bug on the lens right here let's see if we can't get that little puppy off get that little smudge off of there and it is going to be an amazing day throwing top water so you guys are not going to want to miss out on this because it's going to be some great great footage what's going on guys welcome back to the channel today we are out here it is first thing in the morning early fall and what i want to talk about today is one of the best kept secrets of fall fishing and that is going to be throwing a big walking bait it is going to be one of the best bites of the fall that i think everybody is missing out for a few different reasons so i'm going to break down all the different things that i do to capitalize on this bite and some of the things you're probably not doing so stay tuned you're not going to want to miss this episode so everybody's probably already thinking, well, John, I throw a big walking bait, and I know you do. But the problem is people don't throw it when and where you should. Everybody breaks it out right now. First thing in the morning, you can see there's still fog on the water behind me. The sun hasn't even come up yet. Everybody is breaking it out then, but then after the sun comes up, they put it away. They say, I am done with it for the day. And that's just a mistake because the fall transition happens earlier than you think. Right now, it was probably 60 degrees last night, but the couple nights before this were actually in the low 40s. And as soon as you start to get those low 40 dips, that's as soon as the fall transition starts. And you start getting big fish pushing up shallow for the simple reason that the bait fish are getting shallow again. And some of those biggest fish are always the first to make that transition. Now you don't have all of the fish shallow, but you get a really big portion of them shallow. And so throwing this bait all throughout the day can really catch you a ton of big fish. But it's one of those bites where you have to keep it in your hand all day long. And that's something that just makes people really, really, really uncomfortable when they're not sure of how many bites they're going to get. I might only get 10 bites a day on this bait, but one thing that people always forget is that topwater baits tend to get the biggest fish out there. It's a third of the column that people always forget about. You know, you have the bottom third, the middle third, and the upper third, and people want to put this bait away as soon as that sun comes up. Well, you're making a mistake for the sole reason that you can cover a ton of water with this bait, you can catch giant fish with it, and you can really do something that nobody else is doing in an area that nobody's doing it. And so don't put this bait away. Now one of the things that I really want to talk about is the gear that I throw this on because I think people are really missing out on the gear that they're throwing it with. I think they really throw it on the wrong gear. So we'll take a quick break in the action. I'll tell you about the setup I'm using here. Uh, if you notice, I never backlash this one time hucking straight braid with a topwater as hard as I physically could. So this is an Arc Gravity G5 reel with an 8 1 to 1 gear ratio with P-Line TCB 50 pound braid. Super smooth casting and you'll never get a backlash with these Arc reels, I swear to you. I come straight out of the package, all I do is tighten this up about 3 quarter, don't even adjust this knob and it's good to go. And you notice I only lost a couple of those giant smallmouth I'm throwing this on an Arc S seven foot medium heavy moderate action crankbait rod what that does is that allows those fish to load up on that rod instead of just pulling it out of their face and you'll notice there were several times where I had fish just absolutely missing the bait popping the bait out of the water knocking the bait over sideways and I was able to just keep working that bait until they absolutely got it and I would load up on them and I'd land almost every single one of them with this and the hooks that I have on here these are the stock hooks that come on here these are trocars I believe or they might be mustad triple grips I'll have them all linked below as I always do but my gosh that was was an absolute beat down right there. Another area that I think people mess up with a spook is actually how they work the bait. It's something that you can do the same retrieve over and over and over again, but you really have to mix it up. So the real key to this bait is how you work it. It's about getting those rod twitches in there to get that bait to actually walk across the surface of the water. So you can see as I'm fishing it, I am bouncing my rod tip and reeling almost at the same time. And that's what gets that bait, if you can see it far enough out there, to walk back and forth. And then when you get that dialed down, especially when you see a fish chasing it or you have one miss it, speeding it up and changing the cadence of how you work that bait is really going to help you get a few more bites out there on the water and really kind of trick some of those finickier fish into eating your top water. And so you can see I'm bouncing that tip right there. You can see that bait really walking back and forth. So after you get the action of the bait right where you're varying that retrieve, people also mess up on the hook set. So I have a couple clips where I catch some giant smallmouth on this bait. I want you to notice my hook set when you're watching this. Oh, 
they're big and Oh my gosh. Got him that time. I hope you guys are seeing this. This is insanity. As I'm working that bait and I'm bringing it back to me and that fish eats the bait, they come up behind it and a lot of times they might miss it the first couple times, but you'll notice my hook set is a sweeping hook set, almost like you're fishing a Carolina rig. And the reason is if you look at this bait, where are the hooks at? The hooks are on the bottom side. So if I do my typical hook set where I lift up, I'm gonna pull that bait right out of that fish's mouth because as they come up and eat it, if I pull up, it's gonna pull it away. But if I do a sweeping hook set, you can see how instantly that gets hooked on my hand and that's not even a fish's mouth. And so that's why you need to have that sweeping hook set to the side to really make sure that you're putting the hooks into that fish's mouth. And that also gives you the opportunity if they miss the bait, and you pull it away from that fish, you're just going to be pulling it across the water. And so it might just go under and then move maybe 10 feet and you can really reel it up real fast and then launch it back out there. Where people mess up when they set the hook like this is that bait will go flying and then it gets all wrapped up in itself and then you're fighting to try to catch up to it and you don't really get a second opportunity on these fish. Whereas a lot of times if these fish miss that bait, if you can throw it right back in there, they'll come back up and get it because in their mind they lost it or they missed the bait and so they're trying to refine that bait. And so making sure you can get back in there is really, really critical. And sometimes I even have a second topwater rod, maybe with a popper or with another spook sitting there in a smaller model. Something that I can follow that up with, but a popper is a really, really, really great or option for that. And I'll have all this stuff linked down below as always, so you guys can get the gear that I'm talking about. And so leading into that, I want to talk about the gear that I throw this on a little bit, because I think guys use some gear they probably shouldn't be using with this. So right off the bat, this is a six sense catwalk. You can see when that bait walks, it does a really good job at being a great bait fish imitation. It has a slimmer profile up front, so it's not pushing as much water. So I like it when it's calm out in the morning but I throw that on straight 50 pound p-line TCB braid and you might be saying well why straight braid I like straight braid just for the simple reason that I don't ever have to worry about a knot and if these fish are coming up looking at a top water the last thing they're gonna notice is some braided line right in front of that bait especially with how fast you're typically moving a spook it's not something that I'm gonna concern myself with and then I don't have to worry about that knot getting caught in the tip of my rod I don't have to worry about the connection I don't have to worry about breaking those fish off one just actually busted right over there and so it's something that I don't have to worry about the next is going to be the rod so this is an arc essence and what it does for me is it actually lets me dummy proof my hook set instead of me setting the hook with a stiffer rod or a graphite rod what will happen is when I set the hook instead of me pulling it away from the fish even if that fish barely has it it dummy proofs it in the fact that it loads up slower and so it really saves me time on the hook set and it saves me pulling the bait away from that fish and so I think that's a really big thing that people don't utilize as often is if you're new to topwater fishing or you just have a tendency to pull it away from those fish go to a cranking rod especially because a lot of time, a lot of times those bigger fish are the ones that come up slow on it and they use that suction to pull it under so if you have a fast action rod you'll pull it right away from those fish so go to a cranking rod and save yourself some time i also use a fast gear ratio reel and you've heard me talk a lot about using a seven to one gear ratio reel when i want more torque i don't necessarily need more torque when it comes to throwing a top water so i'm going to go to that eight one to one because when those fish come up, they're coming out of the cover and I'm throwing straight braid and so I don't need to put as much torque on them because I don't have to. I can literally just lean and reel those fish because they're up out of the cover. They're gonna stay up and out of the cover a lot of times. And if I keep winding them, then I have that straight braid on there. I already have the muscle to pull them out of there. And so that's really, really key for my setup when I'm throwing this top water spook. So the fall is always a great time to throw a spook, but September is also a great time of year to throw a bunch of other baits. And so up here, I will have my September baits video linked so you can see what other baits, including a spook that I'm going to be throwing this time of year, that'll kind of go along with everything else that we've talked about today. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.